name that landmark. Yeah, the corporate logo's a bit of a clue. London's BT Tower. It was once the dynamic symbol of British telecommunications, very cutting edge. Now it's a 60-year-old monument to just how fast the cutting edge moves. It's still an active comm centre, but most traffic these days runs through underground fibre rather than its microwave links. Basically, a beacon of connectivity outpaced by the very connections it helped to create. And the wider telco industry would do well to heed that 620-foot warning from history. A new report out by STL Partners into the impact of AI into the sector suggests that for some, it's going to be a very quick journey from future-facing innovator to faded icon. As the report author Amy Cameron told me, telcos have to either follow the money and harness AI or get swept away by it. And one line in the report is pretty blunt. The traditional telco model, it says, will die. Between 2019 and the end of 2024, the market capitalization of the telecoms industry dropped 34%, despite growing revenues by 11%. Modest revenue growth of, you know, doing the same thing you do in the same way you do is not sufficient to hold investors. And it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing to be a utility, mm. but that is what telcos will become if they just you know, continue operating the way that they do. The question is not whether they recognize that the challenge is there, is whether they are able to break the mold, but I still think it will be a minority of telcos that will really change fundamentally mm. the kind of company they are and their position in the wider economy. Well, let's, let's look at some of the specifics in the report. You, you have a phrase, the connectivity orchestration market, and it's clearly pivotal. Just explain what that phrase means then for those who aren't familiar with it. Yeah, so the way we think about the market for connectivity or the way that I'm thinking about it in this research is you have your physical network assets, your base stations, your fiber cables, um, and those are primarily the value assets that telcos have now. What's happening is that as t telco networks become more software driven in how they operate, that layer on top, which is the connectivity orchestration, which is at the software layer of managing those physical assets, becomes more valuable. Mm. Because actually what happens is we have a lot of redundancy in the physical assets. But if they are more software driven in their operation, we can make better use of the assets that we have, we can adapt much more quickly to the needs of end customers, and we can do a lot more with the assets that we have. We can make networks more programmable so that you can say, I just, I need this security or I need this coverage, I need this at this time or that time. And that's really where the value is. So being able to deliver that on-demand flexibility, um, kind of adaptability to end customers on top of those physical network assets, which change slowly, is really where the value is, in my opinion. Connectivity is, is clearly going to remain a, a key enabler of intelligent, agentic systems. Um, and this is a quote you have in here, but the traditional telco model will die. And, and again, just explain how those new forms will emerge and, and why you're so definitive that traditional model, it's dead. So let's look at the traditional model. It is that um, you have heavily manual operations in terms of managing your network. You have a team of hundreds of engineers looking at screens, tracking the faults and fixing them more or less in a manual fa fashion. Obviously, there's some automation in there and you sell actually not that much of a huge range of services. You can buy, you know, five gigs or you can buy 100 gigs of data from your supplier. You can buy, you know, your basic broadband or your fiber broadband or what have you. The difference is that you have a highly automated and intelligent network which self heals. You don't have anyone in your network operations center that is all automated and then you have open your network 
so that people can play around and say, I want to try this parameter, or that parameter, or this parameter, or that parameter. And so you're selling something different than you know, gigabytes or pure speed. What you're selling is the ability to leverage the connectivity to make your application more effective. Mm. And so how you're operating your networks is different and how you're selling your capabilities is different. And that's really the change that I see happening in terms of the traditional model dying. Why is it that telcos just haven't seen these opportunities already? Well, I think that part of the challenge is mindset, but it's also, you think about when these companies came to life. Most of these, you know, hyperscalers, you know, the big tech giants of the 2010s, they were born in the late 90s, in the early 2000s. They were born in a digital age. The whole company foundation was built in a time that was software first yep. and ready to pivot. Telcos are 100 plus years old. They were established in a completely different world and they're accelerating in how they change. You can see with the onset of generative AI, the, the pace at which they have developed propositions for their customers around generative AI is so much faster than what they did in the past. The question is just, is it fast enough? enough. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's really what we're trying to galvanize here. For all the, the, the sort of uh, adapt or die that we've yeah. talked about, you also talk about these are generational opportunities for telcos. So there's there's a lot to seize here mm -hmm. if they have the right the right mindset that you talked about. I don't think that there is anyone out there who is saying generative AI is nothing new. It's mm. not going to change the world. I think that everybody agrees it is radically going to change the world. It's a question of how radical, you know, in terms of other industrial booms that we've had, mm. um, and there is going to need connectivity and infrastructure and applications to bring that into people's every everyday life. And it's generational because it's not gonna happen in like today, tomorrow, but it's, it's gonna happen over the next 30 years and the companies that make that happen are gonna be in a great position. And the adaptability is the most crucial point here because mm. the reality is, you know, let's take the distribution of the workloads. Actually, we don't know how they're going to be distributed. Anyone who tells you that, yes, AI is going to be running at a base station definitely in 10 years' time, it's like, well, no, we don't know that. Mm. What we know is there's going to be demand for infrastructure and the companies that are nimble enough um, to and, and can move quickly enough to meet those needs quickly and adapt to them quickly with the assets that they have, mm are going to be well positioned. And I think we don't know how distributed the workloads are going to be, but they're going to be more distributed than they are now. And if you look at any type of company globally that is good at managing a distributed physical asset base that has a lot of software in it, those are telcos. Really think about the assets that you have and place one or two bets. And it's not that you know exactly what the end product will look like, mm. but you know that there is going to be a large need in this area. And that if you're willing to pivot and find your way there towards this North Star, there is opportunity.